Hey, it's Daniel from VoiceFlow, and we have a brand new step in VoiceFlow called the prompt step. These old AI steps are going to disappear, and they're going to be replaced with a brand new prompt step that has a new enhanced editor that you can use. So if I drag out this prompt step onto the canvas, I can hit create prompt, and this is going to open up our new prompt creation modal. So this is going to allow you to do more advanced prompting, like few shot or chain of thought prompting, as well as actually test out different models to see latency. So if I say something like generate me five travel tips and I hit run here, it's going to be able to provide me the output on the right hand side as well as the latency of tokens. So right off the bat, I can see that it cut it off and that's probably because I don't have enough tokens. So if I increase the max tokens on my output here and I hit run again, you can see that it gave me the five travel tips and the latency was 2.49 seconds and it took about 47 tokens, which was three input and 44 output. So this will allow you to really play around with the different models and figure out what gives you the best response as well as the fastest latency. A new concept that might be introduced to you in VoiceFlow is called few shot or chain of thought prompting. Now this is when you give the AI instructions and then a set of examples to think through before it actually answers your question. This has been found to improve accuracy from a lot of AI models. To do that, we're gonna use the example of a language classifier. I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a new title. We'll give it a brief description as well. And now in the actual prompts, I'm going to get a bit more advanced. So on the system side, I'm gonna give it a system prompt to say it's a language classifier. And now I'm going to start actually entering my main prompt here in the big bucket. So in this case, I've told it to analyze the user's conversation history and respond with a JSON string that looks like this with information about the language. Now, right off the bat, we can see how this does. I'm gonna add in the last utterance variable here. So this is the last thing that the user has said. So I wanted to classify it. So let's hit run. I'm gonna say PA voice flow. And we can see here that it does a pretty decent job. Let's try it again with a more ambiguous example. So something that's half Japanese, half English. And I actually want this to save it as English because the user is mostly speaking in English. So let's see how it does. Okay, it was, did okay. It said it was Japanese and it gave me uh, a decent reasoning here, but I want it to be higher accuracy. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna use this few shot or chain of thought prompting and add in examples. So let's give it a first example where rather than actually giving it the user utterance directly, let's give it an example here. How much does it cost? And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit add and we're gonna add message pairs. So we are gonna give a bunch of examples to the AI agent um, on what its responses should look like given different scenarios. So I'm just gonna speed through this. Cool. So again, our first example here, and now the second example, let's just hit run. So it's gonna run based on this as the last input. Uh, likelihood French, I like this, let's add to the conversation. And then we can continue on uh, giving more examples. So now let's do something a bit more ambiguous, like an emoji. So if I hit run here, let's see what it says. Language unknown, emoji not language specific. I like this answer, let's add it to the conversation. And then finally, let's go with our half Japanese example here. Let's see what it says. It says Japanese, so I don't want that. I actually want it to be English. So let's go ahead and actually add in a message pair here and say it is English. And then finally, we're just gonna add in the final prompt here, which is gonna have that information about what the user said. And now we've got it here that says, here's the last utterance, here's the agent's last response. Here's a previous language that we classified. Let's see what it looks like. And what I can also do is I can add in conversation history. And so when I do that, it's gonna appear at the top, but I'm just gonna go ahead and drag that right before my last prompt here. And so now what it's gonna do is it's gonna send this entire message to the agent. And so it's gonna look at all the examples I've given it in the past. It's gonna look at the conversation history and it's gonna look at the last utterance uh, and it's gonna try and detect what language the user is speaking. So let's run this and just see what the latency looks like. And we can see that latency is about 1.5 seconds and the number of tokens is 48. So now that I've created this way more advanced prompt that's gonna have higher accuracy, what I can do is in my actual agent, this is how I can access it. So there's two ways. The first one is the actual prompt step itself. So this takes an input and then provides the response directly to the user. The second way to do it is using the set step. So this is the equivalent of what used to be the set AI step, where if you, want to save the output to a variable. In this case, I want to save it to a variable called language. I can hit plus here, prompt, select the prompt language classifier, and then select the output as the language JSON variable I want to save it. In. And so now what's going to happen is if I, let's just say I have a, let's say I've got a capture step here and I'm just capturing information the user is doing. 
So now this first one will display it to me. So I'll say voice flow, and that's gonna now run through the language classifier and display it. But in this scenario, I would actually want it to just save it to a variable. And this time, instead of actually displaying it to me, you're gonna see that it saved it to a variable on the left-hand side here that I can then use in a further prompt. So you can see that we do that in our KB response overview. Now, if you wanna actually go and manage all of these prompts, we have a new folder system here on the CMS for prompts, and this will allow you to create folders that you can move them to. So here's an example of a project where I've got a bunch more prompts, and so I've got two folders for them, and if I click in, I can see all the different prompts that I have, and I can actually see where they're used on the canvas. So if I click it, it'll be able to take me to uh, that prompt and where it actually is. So it's gonna make the management of prompts much, much easier uh, to use inside of VoiceFlow. So we're gonna be adding more features to this over time. We're also gonna be adding the ability to import and actually share prompts with each other. So that's it for now. If you have anything cool that you've created, please share it in the Discord community, and we would love to see it and eventually add it to this library. So let us know if you have any questions. Take care.